not apprehensive that uh, it's a difficult environment. I think we have a lot in common. I believe this is my right age for mentorship and direction in this position. But the prosecution has repeatedly said, look at the big picture. What is the big picture? That whatever we do, we do it to the good of this nation. Hello, I'm Anita Nderu and these are the stories making headlines on Capital Online TV. A lack of collective approach in fighting terrorism has increased the continent's vulnerability, according to leaders who attended the African Union Peace and Security Summit in Nairobi. Various leaders noted that a lack of clear criminal justice system which serves Africa has seen only a few terrorists being prosecuted. Nigeria's President Goodluck Jonathan says there is need for more cooperation and information sharing in the region. Kenya's President Uhuru Kenyatta, on his part, said radicalization of youths was a major hindrance to the gains made in fighting terror. Porous borders, corruption, lack of coordination between security forces and the criminal justice system were highlighted as some of the issues hampering the efforts to fight terror. The provision of security should not be the preserve of security agencies. It must be the patriotic duty of every African to be aware of the threat of terror and to take it upon themselves to play a role to defeat it. Additionally, we must make it very punitive for anyone who aids terrorists through corruption or otherwise. The National Assembly was on Tuesday vetting President Uhuru Kenyatta's nominees to various diplomatic posts as well as Director General to the National Intelligence Service. The Defence and Foreign Relations Committee started by interviewing Major General Philip Washira Kameru, who has served in the military for more than 30 years, rising to the position of Director of Military Intelligence. Major General Washira has been credited by analysts in the security sector for his role in gathering intelligence for Kenya Defence Forces during Operation Linda Inchi in Somalia. I have been there since 2006, December. And since then, there have been a lot of uh, security issues that have been uh, happening in this country. And in all of them, I have had a role to support, uh, together with our officers in KDF, to support the other institutions in this country to fight the insecurity that has been coming up. And so in terms of understanding how to deal with the security, I have no doubt that I possess the experience that will be required. The final, the, the, the current assignment I'm dealing with, most of it is dealing with the, our KDF soldiers who are operating in Somalia. And so there's no, other, no better practical experience than supporting troops who are fighting a war and ensuring that they succeed in what they are doing. And this is what I've been doing. Defence teams of Deputy President William Ruto and journalist Joshua Arab Sang have accused the prosecution of looking for excuses to argue cases that have no evidence. Ruto's lawyer Karim Khan alleged that the prosecution is overstepping on rights of the accused in its bid to cover up for mistakes made in selecting suspects and witnesses. He says the prosecution should come clean on what it intends to achieve and who it wants to fix in its case, which he claims has diverted from the post-election violence. He is also blaming the prosecution for ambushing the defense teams with evidence not disclosed before as required by law. Sang's lawyer Katwa Kigan, in concurring with Khan, alleged that the prosecution was selective in giving the court the bigger picture over allegations that witnesses recanted their evidence after being bribed. We want to know what the target is. We didn't. We've been blindsided. My learned friend asked, sent an email, that over the summer recess there's an amnesty. So we said, okay, we'll agree to that. We will not have filings. There was no courtesy filing. A few days before this session, we are ambushed, we say, ambushed by a new application for the first time stating that they were seeking to add evidence as incriminatory evidence. And the prosecution of vermins, that somehow there's no prejudice, and that being repeated by the legal representative of the victim, doesn't make it the truth. There is massive, obvious, clear prejudice what is it? The prosecution say, well, this has been disclosed previously. That's a half-truth. Because firstly, it was withheld from the defense. It was only unredacted.
the day before the filing, on the 21st of August, I believe. Some of it, important aspects of it, were unredacted on the 21st of August. But, Your Honours, we, we, we cannot swim against the tide. We are a small defence team against the power of the prosecution, supported by an assembly of state parties, having all the cooperation of states, including the state of Kenya and other states. We have a right, any accused has a right, to know what the target is. Retired President Daniel Torrey Teach Arab Moy, who was Kenya's second head of state, has turned 90. Moy rose from humble beginnings to spend more than 50 years as a member of parliament and a quarter a century as president and is remembered for his authoritarian rule. As an orphan, he rose to become a teacher in 1945 and when he was 31 years, he became the Rift Valley representative in the Legislative Governing Council and eventually an Assistant Secretary of Education, representing Kenya in the UNESCO conference in Dar es Salaam. In 1978, Moi's leadership was severely tested when politicians attempted to change the constitution to bar him from succeeding then President Jomo Kenyatta and later a coup in 1982 made him move to assert his position as a leader. He ruled the country with a firm hand for 24 years. A number of Kenyans expressed their views on the retired head of state. Who will unite Kenyans and will work for the good of Kenyans. For details on these and other stories, log on to www.capitalfm.co.ke forward slash TV.